Angie Homley Zabo here. I'm going to show you step five in our basic metals process today. So we just finished, or you should have just finished, cutting out your design out of the sheet metal. You've also soaked your paper template off the metal and you have nice clean dry metal. Our next step is to file. The first thing we have to do is talk safety. Filing is a fairly safe thing to do. Um, I suppose you could accidentally poke your finger, uh, but other than that, there's not too much you have to worry about. I would ask that you keep your goggles on just because it's always safer and you're not going to get dust or small metal filings in your eyes that way. But other than that, you should be good to go. The first thing we need to do after thinking about safety is to learn about our files themselves. These are examples of the needle file set that my students have in their toolkit. So I'm going to go through some of the basic information that you need to know about needle files. The first thing you need to know is that they are titled or named after the cross section of the file. So a cross section would be if we looked straight down the length of this file, the shape that we would see. So what you're seeing on the left portion of the screen here are all the cross sections. And on the right portion is what some of the files look like. So the first file, the most simple file that you're going to find are your flat and your tapered flat. This would be an example of a tapered flat file. It's wide at the bottom and it comes to a taper at the top. It's flat on the top, flat on the bottom, and it has skinny little sides going up and down. A flat file, a plain flat file, same thing, except a, instead of coming to a point, it would have a square or rectangular end. There's just not one of those in this image here. The next type of file that you'll find in most needle file kits is a knife edge file. So it's much like a flat, except on one edge, so say if this was a knife file, knife edged file, you would have a skinny edge over here, like a knife, and then a normal edge on this side. It allows you to get in really narrow shapes. You will also find in most needle file kits a square file, which here is, I believe, this, nope, this one. Okay, so the cross section is square. You'll find round files, sometimes of different millimeters um, in diameter. You'll find oval files. Some of my favorite files are my half rounds. I like a half round because of this flat edge and it's got the curve edged. Um, for ease of remembering in my classroom, I also call this file a half round. It has, instead of having one flat, one domed edge, it has two domed edges. And you'll also find a variety of triangular files. Um, technically, these two different triangular files have different names, but again, to ease things for my students, we call them both triangular files. So they're pretty easy names to remember because they're named after their cross sec section and simple shapes. What you need to know next is how and when to use each of these. Um, after I'm done with this portion of the video, I'm going to show you filing technique. And when I go over filing technique, I'm going to go into more detail about when you use different files. But as a quick intro, flat files, flat edges, so either of the flat or the tapered flat or the flat side of the half round is used on straight edges or con vex shape. Convex shapes are, are edges that bow out, like a hill bows out. Okay, flat files on convex and straight edges. The knife edge is kind of a flat file, so you could use the flat edge as a flat file, but you also use the knife edge, this point, as a way to get into very narrow spaces. So you can use the knife edge in narrow spaces, narrow angles. You use the square, triangular, and well, both triangle files are used for their corners. And they're used when you have an angle. So if you've got a 90 degree angle, inside angle that you're trying to file out on a piece, you would use the square file because they have 90 degree angles. Um, other angles are achieved through the use of either of the triangle files. Because we've got one, two, three different angles that you can work from. Round, oval, and the domed side of half rounds are used on interior or exterior concave shapes or edges. So a concave 
shape or edge is a shape that dips down and in, like a cave, okay? If you learn that at some point in your math education, I'm sure. So a concave shape, we use the half round, the domed edge of the half round, or a round file, depending on the size of the concave edge. So that's your quick and dirty intro to the needle file names and what they look like. If you're one of my students, it's really important that you remember those names and you communicate with me using them. If you're not one of my students, you should remember them too. All right, take a pause, take a look, make sure you understand how the titles work, and then you can go on to the next section of this video which shows you how to use the needle files in action. As we talk about filing, I really wanted to have a view from the side so that you can see the angles of the file as I'm working on different edges. The first thing I'm going to file out is this triangle. They've got straight edges, so it's pretty straightforward. I just need a flat file, whether it's flat and tapered like this file or flat like this one with a flat end, it really doesn't matter. A flat file. The metal hangs off the edge of your bench hook. I'm right-handed, so I hang it off the right side. If you're a lefty, hang it off the left side. I want my file to be straight up and down, so it's perpendicular to the metal, and then I tilt it forward. Okay, so straight up and down, tilt forward, and then my file cuts on the push stroke. So I'm going to just run my file down the edge of the metal repeatedly until it's fully filed. So how do we know if it's fully filed, right? There's two reasons we file. Reason number one is to get rid of any errors in sawing. And the better you get at sawing, the less you need this aspect. But as I'm looking at my metal, this edge is a little lumpy. It's not quite as straight as it could be. And I want a really nice, clean, straight edge. So I'm gonna file until that edge is straight. The second reason that we file, and this you need even if you're perfect at sawing, is we want to get rid of any cut marks that our saw makes as it cuts. And it's hard to show you on camera, but when you cut metal with a saw, you get these little kind of scratches all the way down the metal, and that's not going to buff or sand out very easily. So we file away those marks, then we sand them, and when we buff, our edges should be as clean as any other surface on our metal. So I'm just going to file until those edges are straight. It takes some time, it takes some work. So I'm straight, I'm perpendicular to the metal, and I angle my file forward, and then it cuts on the push stroke. If you have any high points, and on this piece of metal right here, it bows up a little bit, I wanna get rid of that high point. I'm gonna do the same thing, but now instead of the full stroke down the metal, I'm just gonna focus on that one high point until I knock my high point down and everything's kinda of even. Once I've got that even, then I'll keep going. And when you file, it does take a little bit of muscle, so take your time. I'm far from being done filing this, um, so I'll keep working on that. The next shape that I wanna talk about filing, because it does look a little different, is a rounded shape. So we've got two different edges that I have to, to file. I've got this edge, this inside edge, and I've got this outside edge. This edge, as we look at it, is a convex shape. Convex curves up into space. This shape, when I file it, this edge is a concave shape, like a cave. It dips down into a space. And I'm gonna use different files for each. I'm gonna use a flat file on my curved, and I'm gonna use a half round on this inside shape. If this was a smaller shape, I could also use a round file, but my half round will fit this edge the best. And really, when you're picking a file, it's all about fitting your edges. This time, when I'm filing, I'm doing the same thing, perpendicular, perpendicular I'm gonna lean forward, but I wanna curve my, my file around that edge. Kind of a swoop. I wanna move it with the curve. And again, I'm filing to get a nice edge, and I'm filing to get rid of all saw marks, and I keep filing until both things have been achieved. So I look at my edge. If I don't see any saw marks, and it's nice and smooth, I know I'm done. This one's getting close. I've got a little bit more work to do up here. So that's the flat file. The round file, when I'm doing inside shapes, okay, this is an inside shape, a pierced shape, I usually stand my metal up on my bench hook and I file on the inside like this. So I'm still perpendicular to the surface of the metal, 
tilted forward and I'm swooping with my curve. And if it was a straight line on the inside, I'd go along that edge, move along that edge in a straight line as well. And again, I'm gonna do this until I've got nice even edges, no saw marks. That is my goal with all of my filing. This shape is a little bit more complicated. These are all convex edges. So I'm gonna use a flat file, but my flat file, even my knife edge flat file, doesn't fit all the way into those cracks. So I can use a flat file to file most of this piece, but into those cracks, I need to use my saw to get in there. So I'm gonna change my angle again, and I'll show you how I use a saw to file. Okay, using a saw to file, you are gonna just use the edge of the saw, and it's just really little gentle strokes kind of pushing towards the edge to get rid of any errors. And if you don't have errors, don't try to saw it to fix it, because sometimes when you file with the saw, the edge of the saw, it, uh, gives you an error. If I push too hard, it's gonna bite into the metal and I'll get these little chunks out of my piece, which is kind of annoying. But I'm just kind of using the edge of my blade and rubbing it back and forth in those spaces and that'll help smooth things out. So, so I'd go and do each of that. I'd turn it over, because especially when you're doing the filing with the saw, sometimes it'll look good on one side and not the other. And when you have a piece of jewelry, when you make a piece of jewelry, the front of the jewelry has to look just as good as the back. Um, I remember when I first started making jewelry, my mom mentioning that when she, if she's out looking at handmade jewelry, she always checks out the back. And if the back's not cared for just as well as the front, it's not something she's, she's as um, determined to spend time on. Okay, so I'm just gonna use that saw, finish cutting into those spaces, cleaning it up. Another quick view, just for angles. Um, when I file, if you're looking down from the top, this is my curved edge, perpendicular, tilt forward, file with the edge. If there's a high point like there is right here, I'll spend a little bit of time on it, but I'm gonna curve it around the edge. The biggest mistakes with filing that I see my students do is they kind of hack at it, they saw at it, or they use the wrong file. Um, so by hacking at it, I mean they do this. They go in one spot and they go straight up and down, straight up and down. And what ends up is you get these uneven edges. It's really important that you move that file with the edge. It helps keep a nice straight line. Um, if you don't have the right file, you're also gonna cut into the edge. So if I use this and I try sawing in here, the corners of this file are gonna cut into that edge and mess it up. And if I use a half round on this outside edge, it's gonna cut into my edge as well and kind of mess it up. So make sure you pick the right file, flow with that edge on the push stroke, take your time, and you'll get nice clean edges. I'm gonna keep working on filing mine. I wanted to take a moment to show you the end product of filing. So all these pieces have been completely filed, I'm done, and we're ready for the next step. If you look carefully at the edges, you don't see any sand or sawing marks. There's no bites or gouges in them. It's really, really nice and smooth. You can tell it's nice and smooth on the camera because it just looks like one white line. If you look at the front of the pieces or the back, if I flip them over, you'll also notice that all the lines all the way around have a nice smooth flow. You're not noticing any jigs and jags in the lines. So these pieces are filed. They're ready for the next step, which is sanding. Um, and sanding is really satisfying because all of a sudden this dark metal that you've been look looking at with fingerprints and scratches on it starts to look really, really pretty and really, really clean. One thing to note before sanding is you're gonna wanna make sure that all your holes are drilled out so that you can get rid of any of the the ridges that develop when you drill. If my camera will focus, there we go. You can see there's a little bit of metal that sticks out when you've drilled. When we sand, we wanna sand that off. And if we wait to drill until after sanding, you'll have to re-sand that spot. So I've got one piece I need to drill and then I am ready for sanding. Take your time with filing, takes a little pressure, takes a little effort. Um, if it's your first time, uh, it might go a little slow for you, but it'll get easier as you get used to the process. Have fun.